What's up guys, Toy House here. Today I want to talk about gold farms. So, as you know in Season of Mastery, there's going to be a huge gold shortage. You're going to be leveling so much faster, you're going to have way less gold. So today I want to review with you some common gold farms, some gold farms I think that are going to be better now in Season of Mastery than they were back in Classic Vanilla. And uh, overall, you know, it doesn't hurt to go back over some of the most common gold farms, some of the best gold farms, because, you know, we've been playing like TBC lately, and you may have forgotten. So let's jump right into it and let's talk about some gold farms. Now what? You again? So number one, I want to talk about the Demonic Rune and Fellcloth farm. In short, this is the Satyrs and Fellwood. This is a great farm. It's a common farm. The respawn rates are fantastic. You can kill these Satyrs. They have low health. They're grouped up. They're demons. All these great attributes. Fellcloth is very useful. It's used to create things like the core fell cloth bag, which is huge for warlocks. Also, uh, more importantly, it can be turned into moon cloth, which is used to make a ton of stuff, including best in slot bloodvine set for warlocks, uh, and, and more, you know, pretty much throughout the entire uh, classic WoW uh, phase, you're going to want moon, moon cloth, so it's super valuable. But also demonic runes are going to be amazing, and I think even more so, because of these longer boss fights that we're going to have, the double boss, boss uh, health. Uh, and so it's going to be much more straining on mana. So these Demonic Runes are going to be that much more valuable. So Demonic Rune and Fell Cloth farm. You can also get Rune Cloth off these Satyrs and Fell Wood. It's going to be a really great farm you're going to want to try to take advantage of in Season of Mastery. Now number two, we can move over down to Silithus. And we're going to talk about the Encrypted Twilight Text. This just drops off Twilight mobs. It's a pretty common gold farm, you know, I would say it's not going to be different in my opinion than uh, I think in original vanilla WoW, um, you know, it's just used for repeatable quests, turn in for the Snaring Circle reputation. It's valuable because you want to get that reputation up to get those uh, nature resist uh, gear recipes which you'll need for AQ. Pretty straightforward. Um, just farm the Twilight mobs, get the encrypted Twilight text, throw it up in the auction house. It's a good farm. It's always, always has been. Um, while you're there, you can kill, you know, like some of the worms in Silithus or just mobs, you know. But really, uh, encrypted Twilight text is good. There's actually a lot of stuff in Silithus you can kill. Pretty much everything there has some good stuff um, that you can sell. All right, moving on to number three. Enchant Weapon Crusader. So, little known fact, just kidding, pretty much everyone probably knows this at this point, but Crusader is pretty much the best enchant uh, for melee characters in classic vanilla WoW and Season of Mastery. Um, you know, it gives you a strength bonus, gives you a heal, it's fantastic, and Right now, in Western Plaguelands, the Scarlet Spellbinders will have a 0.4% chance of dropping this recipe. It's, like I said, the best enchant in the game, so it will definitely be in high demand. People are going to want it. I mean, you know, Righteous Orbs, if you remember, those are quite valuable as well. They're a reagent for enchanting Enchant Weapon Crusader, so all that good stuff. You can also get Rune Cloth from this farm, potions, greens, random junk. It's a good farm. Uh, again, it's really just Western Plagueland Scarlet Spellbinders in Classic. I think in TBC they made the that Scarlet, out, uh, Scarlet Outpost in EPL also drop it. But as far as I know, it's just WPL Scarlet Spellbinders based off of Wowhead. All right, moving on to number four, let's talk about the Eye of Shadow. This is a farm that is interesting. It's kind of similar to like farming, you know, BOE epics. For some reason, I feel like every time I've played WoW, by the way, I've gotten a BOE epic. It's freaking awesome like before i hit 60 i got crawl blade i think like twice like originally 20 years ago 17 years ago i got crawl blade on my hunter and then i got crawl blade again on my warlock back on classic it's crazy what epic am i gonna get next time i don't know um but eye of shadow is kind of like this epic that sells for a lot it's just you can farm it get a lot of money really quick and you don't get any money really until you get that the way to farm it, basically, very commonly done. Demons in Winter Spring, uh, basically all the way south in Winter Spring, just fight those demons. Typically, you're gonna want to be a class that can uh, kite them, so like a hunter or a mage. Um, you can also farm the ones, the demons in Blasted Lands, uh, so that's like Southwest Blasted Lands, the Dread Lords, Felgard Elite, Mana Hounds, etc. Again, these are elites, so you might want to play like a mage or a hunter for doing this type of farm. All right, let's move on to number five, which is Twink Gear. I'm excited about this one because many people probably are thinking to themselves, you know, 
with no mage boosting, you know, with no boosting in general due to this new Season of Mastery change where if you have a character in the group that, um, you know, is, is basically killing gray mobs, the experience can be significantly reduced, um, makes boosting basically null. There's no point to boost. Uh, there's still a point, though, to farming some of these lower-level dungeons. So if you look to Shadowfang Keeper SFK, you can easily run this as a mage or a paladin. Probably a lot of other classes can solo this, just not as fast. You can get things like Assassin's Blade, Shadowfang, Night Reaver. There's a ton of greens and blues. You can either Disenchant or Vendor. The Cloth could even sell for a good amount. This should be a really decent farm, actually. Just going through SFK farming, a good chance to get a lot of low-level Twink gear. Like, the greens had no idea this stuff could sell. This was a big mistake I made once. It was like three agility or something, stamina, level 19 green. It was perfect for a twink. It sells pretty well. Did not know about that. So keep your eye open for uh, 19 twink items. I don't know if that's even going to be a thing, honestly. People are going to want twink gear in uh, Season of Mastery, but typically we do see people that are interested in that gear. Okay, let's move on to number six which is basically the elemental fire, water, um, you know, all, all that type of stuff. These are very, very valuable because elemental fire makes the greater fire protection potion. You can get these off the Arathi Highland burning exiles. You can get um, elemental earth from the earth rock elementals in the Badlands. It's a great farm. That's used for greater nature protection potion. Of course, if you're not familiar with raiding, these are must-have consumes for MC and uh, AQ, respectively, the Fire and Nature Protection Potions. Water Cresting Exile in Arathi Highlands or Toxic Horrors in Fellwood for the um, Greater Frost Protection Potion, Elemental Water. Those are very common farms. Then also we have the Air Thundering Exile in Arathi Highlands or Dust Stormers in Silithus for that Elemental Air. So there are Elemental Farms all over. They also, some of these also drop Essences, so Essence of Fire, Essence of Water, Essence of Air, Earth, Undeath, and Living Essence. All of these reagents are useful uh, in some capacity, um, so I definitely highly recommend these farms. Particularly, I would say Phase 1 Elemental Fire is going to be a very hot spot. Probably Arathia Highlands Burning Exile is going to be uh, very contested for that. But, you know, as time goes on, phases actually advance quite quickly with two months per phase, so you can see um, supply and demand, but these are all great farm spots to make a lot of gold. All right, let's move on to number eight which is actually farming grays. This is actually my favorite tip out of all of them because I think for Season of Mastery, everyone's going to be broke as a joke. I think everyone's going to <laughs> like try to be making money. I think auction house prices will be lower than they could be. I think inflation will be kind of low, actually, because everyone's going to be learning skills, learning their mounts. That money is just going to be taken out of the WoW economy. And so I think prices will remain relatively low. Um, and so with that said, I think your best bet for making gold will probably be vendoring, which is creating gold essentially from nowhere, right? But what are you actually going to vendor? Well, actually grays, gray items in terms of rarity sell quite well. And I'm going to tell you about some of these farm spots that I highly recommend. So we've got Swamp of Sorrows, the Swamp Jaguars. They drop long soft tails, bristly, bristly whiskers and large fangs, which you can auction house. That's a white item. Also Wicked Claw, which is a white item. But the uh, Bristly Whisker sells for 7 silver and 33 copper per drop. Long Soft Tail, 8 silver, 3 copper per drop. So those are pretty good. And Thousand Needles Shimmering Flats is a personal favorite of mine while leveling. So this is kind of around like level 30-ish. Um, Intact Basilisk Spine, thir 3 silver, 20 copper. Curved Basilisk Claw, 3 silver, 76 copper and of course you're gonna get many large fangs you're gonna get lots of heavy and medium leather if you have skinning compare prices to the auction house should you skin it and vendor it or should you auction house it just figure that out on your own and there's also strangle thorn veil there's actually a cave there uh and you can get uh the thrash tail basilisks there which drop the large basilisk tail for seven silver 13 copper the squishy basilisk eye for six silver 76 copper and also the basilisk heart which is 10 silver 13 copper and so these are just great farms you could do you know while you're leveling while you're max whatever farm grays sell them to the vendor get a good amount of gold without having to deal with auction house transaction fees the weight, etc. Supply and demand, it's pretty much always there. You can just keep farming grays for that gold. So I think it's going to be an underrated way to make gold in Season of Mastery. Highly recommend that one. All right, let's move on to the last tip today. We have farming cloth. 
you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit, you know, with the satyrs, with SFK. There's a lot of ways that a lot of these farms you'll already be farming cloth, but there are some dedicated cloth farms, things like stockades or dead mines. You could even do Razor Friend Crawl or Razor Friend Downs, Scarlet Monastery, but also WPL farms, like the actual farms. You know, if you're a mage, you can still do these AOE farms, and they're quite amazing, actually. You can get a lot of, uh, a lot of cloth from those. Arathi Highland Farms are another AoE farm. If you are Horde, uh, you can do many of the farms. If you're Alliance, I think just the Goshek farm. Uh, Maradon is pretty much off the menu. It's not going to work for mages, I predict, uh, because of that new Season of Mastery Snare immunity. But uh, there are other options for mages outside of certain instances um, that you should still be able to AoE farm. Really, to summarize, the, you know, the, the, the farm cloth... Um, you know, anywhere like with lots of humanoids, high population areas, so dungeons, western plague lands, or at the highland farms, etc., are all going to be pretty good for making some uh, gold off cloth. So, with all that said, guys, I hope these gold farms help you. Uh, I know that a lot of these, um, you know, were good back in classic. I think farming grays is the new addition for Season of Mastery. We'll see what works best, but hopefully, this is a good tip for you guys. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.